David was the king of Israel for 40 years. He ruled seven years from Hebron and 33 years from Jerusalem. Then he died and was buried in Jerusalem. His son Solomon became king and took control of David's kingdom. Solomon loved the Lord and followed his father David's instructions. And Solomon also offered sacrifices and burned incense at the shrines. The most important shrine was in Gibeon, and Solomon had offered more than a thousand sacrifices on that altar. One night, while Solomon was in Gibeon, the Lord God appeared to him in a dream and said, Solomon, ask for anything you want and I will give it to you. And Solomon answered, My father David, your servant, was honest and did what you commanded. You were always loyal to him and you gave him a son who is now king. Lord God, I'm your servant and you've made me king in my father's place. But I'm very young and know so little about being a leader. And now I must rule your chosen people, even though there are too many of them to count. Please make me wise and teach me the difference between right and wrong. Then I will know how to rule your people. If you don't, there is no way I could rule this great na nation of yours. And God said, Solomon, I'm pleased that you ask for this. You could have asked to live a long time or to be rich, or you could have asked for your enemies to be destroyed. Instead, you asked for wisdom to make right decisions. So I'll make you wiser than anyone who has ever lived or ever will live. I'll also give you what you didn't ask for. You'll be rich and respected as long as you live, and you'll be greater than any other king. If you obey me and follow my commands, as your father David did, I'll let you live a long time. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Act like people with good sense and not like fools. These are difficult times. So make every minute count. Don't be stupid. Find out what the Lord wants you to do. Don't destroy yourself by getting drunk, but let the Spirit fill your life. When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank God for everything. And the Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. I am the bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live forever. My flesh is the life-giving bread that I give to the people of this world. They started arguing with each other and asked, how can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that you won't live unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man. But if you do eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have eternal life, and I will raise you to life on the last day. 
My flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are one with me, and I am one with you. The living Father sent me, and I have life because of him. Now everyone who eats my flesh will live because of me. The bread that comes down from heaven isn't like what your ancestors ate. They died. But whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, may your word live within us and bear much fruit to your glory. Amen. Well, just like we have a calendar which helps us to know what day of the week it is and to help us plan, and I know some of us have difficulty with remembering what day it is, but we have those sorts of things to help us. Well, the church also has a calendar, and it's made up in this part of its calendar of what's known as Ordinary Sundays. And the purpose of the readings during these Ordinary Sundays is to nourish our faith in order that we might grow. And that's the reason we use the colour green. You may not have recognised that, but the colour green is quite a long period during the church's calendar and part of this year. And it's to remind us of growth. The readings are to encourage us in our growth, in our understanding. Well, today we're almost at the halfway point of our journey. The readings of the last few weeks of today and next week are about being fed by Christ, the bread of life. And you might wonder why we keep having these bread of life readings that, uh, well, they like to recur and occur again uh, at this point in our readings. The words of Jesus about him being living bread are particularly relevant for us when we celebrate Holy Communion. And communion, if you like, is the word of God illustrated before us. We see it, we feel it, we taste it, we eat it. It's more than one of our senses being used. It's not just about hearing, but it's about all our other senses being involved in order that we might not only just hear the message, but that we might take it on board and live it experience it, see it, taste it. Just like bread from the local baker is nourishment for our body, so Christ, in a very simple way, is nourishment for our souls, our body. And all of us know, no matter how hard we might try to do it on our own, we can't. We need that bread of nourishment. And reading these bread of life stories and reading the Ephesians passage about what it means just to live together, about listening to the story of Solomon and his, his desire for wisdom in the way he should lead, I wondered what has that got to do with the world in which we live against this background of suffering, of death and violence that confronts us every day. What does it mean for us as a church community as well when we think about this world we live in? What relevance do these readings have for us when people so often seem to be at each other's throats and there are victims of terrorism in different parts of the world? What relevance these readings against all the health and relationship and business problems of people here and of the communities we live and the world beyond? What do those stories that constantly surround us that seem to deny life have to do with the bread of life? Well, absolutely everything. John, in his gospel, is writing about Jesus being the living bread. He's not trying to give us the actual words of Jesus. He's trying to give us the meaning, the inner significance of Jesus' words. 
He's showing us that Jesus took on human life in all its fullness. John's very much about the word becoming life and flesh among us, within us. As Jesus and the disciples would share around that table, that simple sharing of bread and wine took on a new meaning. A new meaning that they would take that very life into their very being, into the very souls, that it would change them from within. As Solomon sought to be a new king, to be a king that could rule God's people, he asked for wisdom, that he might absorb and take on the wisdom of God in order that he might know the right way to lead. And in Ephesians, Paul is trying to simply get people to understand the basics of living together, of caring for each other, of reaching out, nurturing, building communities of compassion. These words remain as relevant then as they do now. Words that really should challenge us, should scare us to the very core of our being. Because so often we just don't live them out, do we? They're words we hear. They're nice words that we take on board. They make us feel good and wonderful and warm. But do we take them from here and live them out in our lives? Do we live them out in all that we do? Do we live them out in our politics, in our social setting, in our world? In a world that so often seems to want to solve problems with violence, we're offered, we're offered broken bread and poured out wine. Jesus says to each one of us, in that broken bread and that poured out wine, when you're discouraged, when you're in despair, when you're tired of life and you're brought to your knees with the pressure of living day to day, remember that I am part of that life of yours. I am part of the struggles you struggle. And together we find new life. Bread, you see, does not become bread simply by just appearing. It's grains that need to be crushed, worked together with yeast and salt and water, allowed to rise, then baked in a hot oven before it becomes bread. Wine doesn't just magically appear. Grapes have to be picked, then crushed. The rubbish has to be thrown away. The wine needs to be allowed to settle and ferment and bring new life. They are basically very powerful symbols in all of our lives. There are times when we go through times when we feel crushed, when we despair, when we wonder if we can keep going. But it's part of life. It's part of our journey. And on the way, there are those who encourage us, who warm us, and like yeast growing within us, fill us and help us to be whole. Each one of us can be yeast to one another. We can be yeast in our world, bringing new life and new hope. And into a world that so often seems like blood spilled everywhere, life crushed out. Just like in grapes when they're crushed, new life begins to ferment and bubble. With time and nurture and care, it becomes something we can drink again. All of this are echoes that constantly occur through John chapter 15, where Jesus talks about him abiding in us and we in him. The verses of today's gospel, Jesus is telling us to, to feed our hearts, our souls, our minds on his humanity telling us to revitalise our lives with his life until we are permeated and filled to the very top with the very being of God.
when we partake of bread and wine, even on the Sundays when we don't have communion, it's worth remembering that every Sunday as we gather together, it's about Jesus giving us life, sustaining us, reconciling us and far more. When we take on board all that Jesus is and wants to be for us is a way of transforming us within and without. His life poured into our lives and poured over in abundance into the wounds of our world. Poured out into the lives of others. We are fed, fed with the living bread of Jesus so that we can be bread and nourishment Food, love, care, concern, that we might be hope for those who hunger for all these things. Being a Christian doesn't give us an insurance policy where things won't go wrong. But rather, we are given a promise that in any of life's harsh, unexpected events, we will always be nourished and strengthened, not only through Christ, the bread of life, but through the very flesh and blood extensions of Christ's love everywhere, through you and me, through all people around the world. So what then is relevance, the relevance of today's gospel? Jesus is offering to actually live in our minds, our hearts, our souls and our bodies in every fibre of our nature. And we can never receive a better offer than that. So let's take up that offer. Let's take up that offer and live out his life and love in our lives, in our community and especially in our world today. Amen.